Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And if you notice, look to your left up there, you'll see all these little white dots circling around that roof. Those are birds. I don't know what they're doing up there, but I know someone needs to feed them. Top in the bag. It's the sometimes vlog. It's a vlog that happens sometimes. And sometimes it happens in Paris, France, in front of the Louvre, much to the confusion of the dude in the orange hat. The man with the yellow hat has lost his monkey, and he is very, very confused as to what is going on with me, and wondering maybe if I'm a monkey, and if he should take care of me. Enough with the Curious George references. Everybody, I am here in Paris, France, having just come out of the Louvre. If you missed the last Sometimes Vlog, we explored the inside and at least looked at a couple of the art treasures in there. I don't want to name any names or ruin anything for you if you missed the last vlog, but you might want to go backwards and check out how I got this cool postcard and see some of the other things in there other than the, this postcard that are similar to it but different and maybe a little more historical. Isn't this a beautiful sight? There's the Louvre on the outside. Once a palace for royalty, there's a whole courtyard behind what you see there. Then this used to be closed in right here. Look at these crazy buildings on the side of this. This was a palace for kings. French kings were here. This was the seat of Imperial France later with Napoleon. This area, not this particular spot. Oh, uh-oh. Some sirens going by. So weird because they don't sound like home, so they don't immediately sound like sirens to me. It's like, what's up, Christmas? Uh oh. Love. City of love. Oh, he just wiped his mouth. He's like, oh, love tastes weird. <laughs> anyway, I'm in the city of Paris. I just did it. I can check a few things off the bucket list in there. At least two sweet world class art treasures in there. And now I have been released into the wild. There's the big glass pyramid you enter through. You can see all the pictures I posted on Instagram. Live fast, die poor is the account name. And you can see, you know, the entry process and all the different things. But look at this, isn't this crazy? I've just been tripping out that this is where the French monarchs lived, and then later all of this was taken over by the French Republic. But a lot of it has survived. And this obviously is all the Louvre, so this has all been expanded and added on to by uh, Napoleon the Third a lot, and different uh, people since the French monarchs were beheaded. Not far from here, just a hop, skip, and a jump down this road over here. This is the Arc de Triomphe du Carousel, I think it's called. It's the Little Arch of Triumph. Uh, commemorating, I don't know because I can't read French, but it says La Army Francois Embarque Abalon. So it keeps going on and on like that and says the word continent. So I'm guessing that this, you know, you know, commemorates uh, a triumph of some kind, just like the other the other bigger arch. Anyway, coming through this arch, you can see that giant Ferris wheel over there. That Ferris wheel is sitting between us and the Arc de Triomphe. I can see the Arc de Triomphe, the big one, the, the big guy, right through the Ferris wheel. I don't know if you'd be able to see What's it on the wall. How's it going, man? And, uh, and uh, anyway, we were there the other night in another vlog. So if you go back to the one called Will I Eat Snails, you can learn a lot more about what's on the other side of that giant Ferris wheel there. But where that Ferris wheel is sitting, uh, that is the place where Louis the 16th was it? And his bride, Marie Antoinette, not at the same time, different times, were both beheaded. That's where the guillotine was for the French Revolution. Pretty crazy stuff. And behind me, the Louvre, full of the world's greatest art treasures. And then over there, the Eiffel Tower. Just, just winking at us. All crazy. Right here is the uh, Garden of Tuileries, is it? I can't pronounce anything French. Embarrassingly so. I didn't take French in school or anything, but it feels like you should be able to pronounce some things, and I just can't. But this garden area was the garden area, especially down that way between us and the Ferris wheel, where the Palace of Tuileries, which used to kind of hand in and close off this courtyard and seal it all in like a giant royal government compound over here. But I think it was burned down or something. That's the thing is that I've been in France for a couple days and this is only my second day in Paris and I think my last on this trip anyways. So who knows, maybe my last uh, day and last few moments in Paris ever as far as I'm aware. And uh, the crazy part about this is so overwhelming. I have done so little preparation and every single building, every single block at least, has got so much history. Either from recent years or the French Revolution or, you know, the old 
you know, Monarchy Days, or Napoleon was here, or he sat over here, he did something, or Ben Franklin was over here in Paris doing this or that. And there's so many things that I wish I could have seen. I wish I could have seen the tomb of Napoleon, and the grave of the Marquis de Lafayette, and there's all kinds of crazy stuff here in Paris. The catacombs, of course, but you can't see it all. You can't see it all. I'm primarily here on this trip for Disneyland Paris. And it's been pretty crazy. It's been pretty insane. Oh, there's a kid posing with the statue of a naked lady. Ah, Europe. All summed up in one picture right there. Pretty much, it pretty much nails it. Pretty much nails it. Anyway, here is a uh, deviation. Uh, we have to go around with this fence over here. And I know it's a deviation because the sign. Now that is one thing that I do understand. Deviation, deviation. So this may be my last night in Paris. I'm pretty sure it will be. Uh, before I'm gonna spend the rest of my week here at Disneyland, and then I'll be flying back home to Los Angeles, California, on the 10th, and I'll be home and I guess sleep well. So it's kind of weird because I still really haven't caught up on sleep. To upload these vlogs, you have to wake up every 30 minutes and log back into the internet all crazy. It's just a weird thing at uh, the hotel. And so I have not been sleeping straight through the night at all by the way right there behind me you can see guys with machine guns and uh, they are protecting us all so heightened security for sure around this area of paris but this is the garden i was talking about garden of tuileries it used to be a palace so that's crazy like i'm walking around where kings walked around where napoleon walked around you know where hitler invaded and then Patton and all those guys liberated and crazy stuff happened in history but like i was saying every block's got so much history i mean ratatouille was somewhere over here you know totally a true story and uh, I don't know enough to like even when I'm walking down the street what I the, even the amount that I do know is like so not enough like just to wrap my head around like Notre Dame is right there and then this is over here and then the Eiffel Tower is right there and there's commandos walking around with machine guns too which is just crazy but it's beautiful. The city of Paris is very beautiful. This whole area is very beautiful. There's giant fountains over here. I'm not sure how well you can see that the Eiffel Tower, Charles you say, and the Louvre. Now I spent two hours in there trying to see the Mona Lisa and uh, Venus de Milo and whatever else I could see. And I was only ever in one wing of the building, just actually from all this here is the Louvre, right? All the way back there, just in this side. And I was only ever in, let's see, well, right behind that arch, right there. That's only wherever I was in that one little, that one little looking section. And I was in there for two hours. And it was really hard for me to find the exit and just seeing the things I wanted to see and a couple other things on the way to and from took up pretty much the entire time other than the vlog was taking up getting to and going from. That's how crazy big it is. Look at this, streets underground, trains underground. When I got out of the train station, it was like three or four stories of underground malls and crazy stuff. When I exited the loop, you exit through this thing that goes up and up and up out this like mall and there's an Apple store down there. So they exit, you exit through the gift shop and then through the Apple store and then up to the streets of Paris. Anyway, my last night in the capital of the cultural world, at least for a long time, the French empire was huge. Napoleon conquered a vast amount of Europe and the world at one moment in time. France had colonies all over the place. I mean, France had a huge influence on the world. It's pretty crazy. I mean, we still use the phrase lingua franca, like, oh yeah, over here, the lingua franca. French was the international language of diplomacy, of love, all this crazy stuff. And it's crazy, what I'm realizing is just like how little I know about France, about Paris, about myself. It's pretty, it's humbling to come to a place with so much history, so many layers of culture, so much going on now, much less have, that has gone on in the past. And then think like, as a fan of history, like, I know nothing. I have not yet begun to scratch the surface. Look at all this crazy stuff. Look at all this. Now this was a much different looking place back in the low, back in the Les Miserables days, you know. Before, uh, before the revolution, after the revolution, they knocked down, I mean, not right in this area, obviously. This is a very expensive area. This was the seat of power of France, and look at it. Ooh, the Rue de Rivoli. 
I don't know how to pronounce anything the French way, but the Rue de Rivoli, very famous road going alongside the Louvre there. And then all the way down here to where it joins up with the Champs Elysees. Here's all the way to the Arc de Triomphe. It's crazy, I'm just hanging out in Europe. So I guess I'm walking it now past the Garden of the Tuileries. And we'll skip over this moment in time to instantly arrive in the future when I get farther down because this is a heck of a long walk uh, along a very ornate fence. And um, let's just skip it to the future. You see, this is what I was talking about. I don't know how well you can see, but right there, right there is a column down there. The Place de Vendome is what that area is called. I don't know how to pronounce it. But that column right there was erected by Napoleon Bonaparte to commemorate one of his victories. Napoleon Bonaparte, the guy, he was over right over there. And then it was torn down later and then rebuilt. It's a popular little spot. I can't even go over to it. That's how many crazy things are around each corner in Paris. That's what I was talking about. Every little nook and cranny is full of history. Anyway, I'm still walking down the Rue Rivoli. I had to actually stop and stop going to the future sooner than I thought. And I crossed the road to get a Coke since two seconds ago when you were just watching me, which is now in my pocket, making my chest look super awkward. Like, hey, what's up guys? I'm super buff. Anyway, I was just thinking right now, and I touched on this in the last vlog too. Don't ever let anyone tell you no, right? People always say something like that. Don't ever let anyone get you down. Don't let people tell you no. But have you ever thought about how much you tell yourself no? Have you ever thought about how much you're just not on your own side? Have you ever thought about how much you tell yourself, I wish I could go do this, but it's impossible. My friends used to go to Europe, right? On tour with their bands. My band never made it to Europe. And I used to sit there and go, oh man, I wish I could go to Europe. I'm so into history. And I love you. I wish I could go to Europe. But it's impossible. I used to be super negative like that all the time and think, no way, I'll never get there. I don't have any money. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have the other thing. And it wasn't until I changed my attitude only like a year or two ago. And by the way, look at this. Fa, 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 fashion. Wow, punk rock has come a long way, huh? Wow, it's pretty fashionable right there. Sexy backpack, sexy backpack. Somebody called Dora the Explorer, but she gonna get a new backpack. Okay, this is totally neither here nor there. Listen, how much are you seriously not on your own side? I spent years being my own worst enemy, literally. I mean, not only was I super depressed during that time and didn't like myself, but I really didn't have much reason to like myself because to be honest with you, I treated myself really poorly. I always just thought, oh, it's impossible. I'll never get to do this. I'll never get to do that. Always down in the mouth, always sour about it. If not out of my mouth, and inside my head, you know, towards myself. And it wasn't until I changed my attitude and thought, you know what, just don't say no. Don't say no, not to everybody else. You have to set boundaries for yourself. Even if they make other people mad, you gotta set boundaries for what you're comfortable with. You have to do what you need to do for you, right? That's fine. What I'm talking about is stop saying no to yourself. Stop saying no to yourself. Not in, a, not in a disobey your conscience kind of way, but stop being so negative towards yourself. Oh, it's impossible. I'll never get what I want. Yes, you will. But the only way you will is by at least starting down the journey, right? The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single footstep. And that first footstep is going, it's not impossible. What I want is not impossible. What I need is not impossible. And that's the first step. That in and of itself, what, what can I do to get started on the path of the quest for positivity? Just honestly think to yourself, it's possible. I don't know how. Maybe it'll come from outside. Maybe you'll never expect it. Maybe God or the universe or whatever it is, good luck will bring you some kind of crazy chance to do something you never thought you'd get to do. Something exactly like this. Believe me, I am one of those people that all of my friends thought, man, you have the worst luck for years and years and years. And now all of a sudden, I'm standing on a street corner in Paris looking at these weird European people with their rent-a-bikes touring a very culturally significant place talking to you guys all of you guys in my life that I never thought would be there isn't it funny how all the French people speak French so good nice look at this I'm gonna lose the bag anyway those are my deep deep thoughts as I cruise down the Rue de Rivoli and you know what's funny is I don't know how to pronounce this street at all that guy's well dressed you didn't see it but it's fine uh, I don't really know how to pronounce anything or whatever but I keep looking at the sign of the corner by the Rue de Rivoli or whatever and I keep thinking it says the Rue de Ravioli. So it's kind of like Ravioli Avenue. No? It was funnier in my head. I really thought that would work. Okay. We're almost to the end of the street here. Woo! 
Potter since when? Since 1898? Since, oh, well, I've got to go in. Oh, they're closed. No, oh, maybe next time. All right, we're here at the end of the street, so I'm gonna do all the dangerous traffic crossing without you and jump you forward to the future. Let's go. Did it work? I think it worked. Okay, we did it. We jumped forward in time. It was uncomfortable for everyone, but we did it. A little cold in Paris. All right, way back there behind this giant blinding Ferris wheel was the Louvre. And then way back behind us, way down over here is the Arc de Triomphe, where we were the other day in the Sometimes Vlog, beyond those ladies. <laughs> Pay no attention to those ladies or that photographer there. Pay attention to that beautiful arch. Look at those beautiful curves down there. That's where we were walking to the Champs-Élysées. Now, halfway between the Champs-Élysées, that big boulevard with all the fancy shops. You remember from the other day where I ate snails and the Louvre, which is way back there, a similar distance, is this. The Place de la Concorde. Once named for Louis XV, it was renamed the Place de la Revolution during the French Revolution. This was the site, the principal site at least, of the guillotine ings, where they executed over 1,100 people, including King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette Right around here, there's a plaque right at the foot of those humans right there. Let's go look at it. That commemorates, well, I don't know if it commemorates, but it tells the story at least a little bit in French, so I don't exactly know what it means, uh, of Louis and Marie and all the beheadings that were happening here. You can see it talks about how it was originally called Place Louis the 15th, and then it was called Place de la Revolution, and then here uh, was the principal site of the execution of Louis the 16th and Marie Antoinette. I'm not sure if it happened out in the street a little bit or right here, but basically right here, the French monarch was decapa from his tainted. He was killed right here. This was the crazy, the reign of terror here during the French Revolution. All the crazy action was going on right here in the biggest square in France. So this place de la Concorde, which is what it's called now, uh, after the fact, you know, well, okay, fine, we won't call it after the king and we won't call it after the revolution, we'll just call it something else. This is the biggest square, I think, in the city of Paris, 21 acres. 21 acres, it's huge. The US Embassy is way back there. Other things, oh, look! The Eiffel Tower's twinkling, yay! It's a fan of twilight, look at it sparkle. And uh, the site of all those crazy executions. It's also the site of this thing right here, next to that plaque, is this giant Egyptian obelisk that used to guard or mark the entry to the Temple of Luxor down in Egypt, which was given to the French government, uh, I guess as a present to Louis Philippe the First, is what it says right there on the obelisk. And it shows all this neat stuff on the side about how they moved it here. I would tell you the year they moved it here, but it was definitely in October of some year with a bunch of Roman numerals that I don't want to spend the time to mathematically figure out. But look at that. Isn't that interesting? So all the craziest monuments in the city of Paris are right here. And I'm just totally tripping. I'm super tired and hungry, foot sore. I saw the Mona Lisa today. I saw Disneyland this morning, did some filming, filmed some sometimes vlogs, hung out with you guys, did Periscopes, Instagram, Snapchat. And now I'm wandering around in Paris at the end of Chance they say I've sort of completed the whole thing now because I kind of walked all the way almost to here the other night. Then I did the Louvre this morning and walked this way. So I've kind of completed the center of Paris now. And we did the Eiffel Tower, of course, a couple days ago, if you missed that, on the Sometimes vlog. So this may be, for all I know, my last trip to Paris, like I was saying. But this is definitely my last night in the city of Paris now. I've got to hitch a ride or find a train or a bus or a, or a scooter or something back to Disneyland, which is about 40 or 50 minutes away by car and uh, 20 or 30 minutes away by train. But look at that. That's crazy. That's a crazy thing right there. Having no kings in um, Anaheim, California, where I'm from, other than other than Mickey Mouse. Uh, we have no monarchs, you know, so it's pretty crazy to think like that is where roughly, this is where the French king was decapitated. Imagine being the head of France, uh, which at that time, just so mighty and powerful and influential around the world. You are the king, you're living in that Louvre or Versailles or wherever the heck you're living in the lap of luxury, golden roofs, and you're married to Marie Antoinette, and she's Kirsten Dunst and everything, and then all of a sudden, there is a crazy mob beheading you for crimes against 
your country. Well, I think actually what happened, and correct me if I'm wrong, please leave comments down below if you know more about the obelisk, if you know more about anything, because I really don't know all that much. This is all just what I remember off the top of my head and the little bit I read on the plane over here, but I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, Louis the 16th, who was the, who was, I almost said the president, who was the king who was decapitated, uh, I think he was plotting or they found him communicating with the outside world after he was imprisoned and they sort of, half of them, the assembly or whatever, they, half of them wanted to save him and the other half were like, no, put him to death immediately, but they, they won by a few votes. But anyway, I think that was what it was. They accused him of at the end was collusion with the enemy. They had already taken over and imprisoned the king. They didn't straight up murder him right when they took over and became the Republic. It was that he actually did sort of like collude with outside powers to get his throne back. And I mean, who could blame him really? I mean, you gotta try, right? You gotta try. You have to get points for trying. Anyway, uh, and he was beheaded here. And then later there was some sort of other thing. And then Marie Antoinette, I think a little bit later was also decapitated here. I think she was brought here with her head shaved and like bound up with ropes and everything. Like it was a very disgraceful thing. They brought her in an open cart so people could like mock her and jeer at her. And she like kept her cool the whole time. Like the story of Marie Antoinette, at least how she died is like pretty crazy. Like you gotta give her some mad crazy props, yo. Ugh, did I just say that in Paris, the city of lights, mad crazy props, yo? Forget I said that. Anyway, pretty crazy interesting stuff. History is really, really so interesting. Uh, to me anyways because it's it's real and then to come to stand where history happened There's a whole other thing and everyone in Europe is probably like okay big deal We have places where kings are dead all the time like well not me. I don't have that usually we got uh, King Arthur's carousel kind of Home does that, does that count? No, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Anyway Last night in Paris. I wanted to come see this. I wanted to come stand where history was made and see, not only the obelisk and everything like that, but see the place where the French monarchs were beheaded. You know, the way we tell the story at home, it's like George Washington kicked the entire British Army and Navy's butt single-handedly, but if it weren't for France, which at that time was still a monarchy, there would be no United States. And then we later kind of helped to influence that whole French Revolution thing back again, sort of back and forth influences going. And, uh, Really, between France and the United States, it was sort of the seat of like modern democracy and all these crazy kinds of things. So we're a lot more closely linked than people realize that we are. I think I saw a statue of George Washington the other day in France, and uh, one of our founding fathers was a French guy by the name of the Marquis de Lafayette. I didn't see his grave. I really wanted to, though. And he is buried here in Paris. That's crazy. It's just crazy to think how intricately linked our history is even for a southern california boy my history and the place i live in's history is connected all the way back here to this square to this place to paris isn't that weird so i don't know i'm sure french people think paris is the center of the world i really don't think it's the center of the world i think the center of the world is like down a ways and then there's like lava there or something like that but it's definitely a very influential place in western history and i feel really honored and privileged to have got to visit it. Everyone here has been super nice and super cool. Uh, the French people are so sweet. And uh, I'm pretty excited to come back someday if I ever get the chance. Anyway, thank you for joining me for just a random walk around Paris. My last night in Paris, I didn't have anyone to hug and kiss in the city of romance with me tonight. So I'm glad you came along to cuddle with our brains and think about that crazy Eiffel Tower Beaming French mind control directly into our minds. Subscribe for some more crazy adventures. Apparently, well, from anywhere around the world and almost in that guy's face. And uh, go check out livefastlifepodcastvirtual.com, all that kind of stuff. There's all kinds of links in the description. Do you ever check those out? Look in the description. Instagram, livefastlifepodcast. Snapchat, livefastlifepodcast. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter, Justin Scarred. And also, sometimes I do Periscope live streaming video from different places. So, thank you for watching the Sometimes Vlog. I know it was kind of a mess. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. Kind of windy and crazy out here. And I am going to go back to Disneyland Paris now. I will see you then. We'll see you then. All right, I think... This guy looks like he's probably giving me a ride to Disneyland, right? He looks fun. He looks fun. All right, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to risk it. See you guys later. Bye-bye.